Chapter 61 Either three of you or no one you are listening at NovelFull.audio Raylin saw his party on the horizon. Raylin could only ask Lioness and Steel Melody for some gaming time out of all the connections he made. The former was obliged to come through the contract she had signed. Steel Melody knew that Raylin and Lioness would draw many opponents with their natural presence. The hero was also the same when drawing opponents, but Maya seemed rather like a normal player. Regardless of their presence, all three had so much strength that no one would be satisfied with opponents on their level. Thus, Steel Melody couldn't contain her excitement as she trembled with starry eyes. Even Raylin saw her expectations from afar, and he chuckled. Steel Melody was the simplest woman out of the party, and Raylin probably would stick closer to her than anyone. Lioness was Lioness, and Maya had her current problems. Knowing the hero's plight, Raylin would be very careful with his words. For now, just as he had said to his male friends, Raylin took out Layla's notes, and he read them while fanning his face with warm air, hello there. Raylin also wore his flame robes, so many players and monsters would think twice before making any move on him. Steel Melody didn't belong to that category, hi. You are quite late. She slapped her steel glove on Raylin's back. He gave her a side dot glance, I was so stressed coming here. It feels like a challenge dealing with all three of you at once. Ha. Huh. Why? Steel Melody asked. At that time, Lioness sneered, he's a sole male member of our party. And we all three are pretty different, I would say. You've got a difficult choice to pursue, Raylin. It's either all of you or no one, Raylin retorted with wise words as Lioness scoffed. Steel Melody gave him a weird side dot glance, you are too deep into a role dot play. We, players, follow our tradition. At last, Ferocious Bear waved her hands, her face beat red, let's begin our adventure, okay. For some reason, her heart sped up too fast, and her face became too hot to endure. Should Raylin throw some warm air her way, Ferocious Bear would fall onto her back. Raylin chuckled, our objective is to go to the hero's new territory. Whose idea was to meet outside the city? Lioness flicked her fingers, mine. We will spend some time together, and I dare to say such a time is rarer than a full family Christmas. I understand that you want to poach Steel Melody and make a good connection with the hero, but our contract has a limited span. I am fine with this adventure and party being a long one if you accept my condition. After this adventure, you will share some knowledge with one of my people. Ha! You won't let me leverage you, even if I smile as sweetly as I can. Lioness crossed her arms and made a dazzling smile. Faced with Raylan's poker face, Lioness gave up and raised her hands, yes, yes. I agree with this condition. Well then, girls. Let's leave this boring guy behind and have some excellent talk. He can only get hotter in a battle. How disappointing, right? That's not true. Ferocious Bear tried to appease the mood, but Lioness wrapped her arm around her and pushed them forward. Steel Melody was also pulled by Lioness, and three of them engaged in a conversation. Well, you all can treat me as a big sister, Lioness took a great approach, or, one of you wants to be a big sister instead. In my high school's trips, the big sister was decided by the chest size, you know. Steel Melody and Ferocious Bear looked below, their eyes squinting. Neither believed that they would be able to win in that area. The tank said, what about the age? I am twenty years old. Oh, I am three years older than you, Lioness chuckled. With this, she became the big sister and naturally made these two call her as such. That affectionate nickname brought them three closer, and Lioness naturally led the conversation to learn more of the tank and the hero. Following them, Raylin didn't listen to them. He sometimes heard one thing or two, but he mostly peeked at Ferocious Bear to see how she was doing. For now, the hero seemed to be genuinely interested in Lioness. That white-dot-haired woman had left enough of an impression on Maya, 
and she wanted to become stronger through learning her character. Ray Lin saw that, and he didn't dare to butt in. However, the pyromaniac's plight happened roughly after an hour of walking. His stamina fell short behind these three, we have to rest. He said, but his party members just turned around and looked at him weirdly. Steel Melody bluntly asked, can't you use your stamina items? We just walked for an hour, and we are in a low dot level area. Raylin clicked his tongue, I have been using those items without breaks. I must keep an eye on the purification, otherwise, they will all shatter without me knowing about it. If you don't like it, then leave. HMPF. No need to be so harsh. I like this party. Steel Melody pouted and turned her eyes away from Raylin. He sighed, let me try something. His black staff came out of the inventory. Since Raylin was a great mage with excellent mana control, his staff naturally floated next to him. This time, however, Raylin made it float horizontally so that he could sit on it. He felt like it would be uncomfortable, but he would keep up with his teammates. Alas, when Raylin sat down on it, he dropped onto the ground. Ha ha ha. Steel Melody burst into laughter. Lioness and Maya were the same, but the hero covered her face and tried to be lower than the other two. Both Lioness and Steel Melody laughed no end. Raylin stood up, not paying attention to them, then patted his clothes, I didn't know that a tank could taunt with their mouth nowadays. Is that another upgrade to your weapon tree, Steel Melody? It looks like Lioness also began treading on the tank path. Disappointed in your guild members. How salty. Ha <laughs> ha. These two burst out laughing for the second time. Knowing that nothing would work on them, Raylin fanned his face and feigned ignorance. He no longer tried his idea with the black staff and returned to his notes. Steel Melody said, even if we don't face any serious threats, this adventure should be fun. You rarely see this guy losing his composure. I think I know what you meant, big sister. He's still young. We will see more of his awkward moments, Lioness replied with a broad smile, then she headed toward a tree. With one slash, Lioness took out a few branches and gathered them in one spot. Light them up, Raylin. She beckoned Raylin to come closer, but he sent a fireball first before coming. That was yet another but small reaction due to his younger age. Lioness smiled and squatted, sit close to the bonfire. In the meantime, we girls should try some hunting to hone up our teamwork. Sure. I wonder if there's a mini dot boss somewhere around, Steel Melody chirped to Lioness words that were like honey. The hero also clenched her hands and said, there's a mini dot boss around. I have it marked on my minimap. Nice. Let's deal with it. Steel Melody also liked the hero's words. The three of them left Raylin alone. The Adventurer's Bonfire. Plus 50% HP and MP regeneration. Your stamina regenerates three times faster. Eating by bonfire will satiate you more. The hunger decreases slower after eating here. She's ready for long adventures. That also should help in wars, shouldn't it? Raylin read the system messages, then returned to his notes. He estimated that it would take them a few days to go to the hero's territory, so Raylin was ready to comprehend the notes and become closer to his flames. In the meantime, he would deal with the lady's remarks. Chapter 62 Do not damage the city you are listening at novel full audio. You have killed the freezing specter. You have killed the freezing specter. You have killed. It took us five days to go to this province. Fucking five days. Raylin spat while extinguishing the freezing specters with his flames. Lioness was next to him, you have been silent for the majority. That was a bummer, Raylin. I can't believe you are that shy. Shy. Raylin glared, could you tell me what you've talked about today? Period. Lioness replied with a stoic face. Period. I won't comment on how Steel Melody thought about it while seeing the blood gushing out of the monster, but
but am I the person to talk about it? Do I look like someone who saw paths? Can I tell you what company makes the most comfortable ones? You look like you are on a period, though. Lioness retorted and chuckled. Ray Lin licked his lips and nodded, good comeback. Then, what about yesterday? Make dot up, we, crowns, don't need make dot up. Arya tilted her head and widened her eyes, scrutinizing Raylan's face, you could use some, though. You would at least look on par with your third brother then. Raylan threw a bomb, you sure know how good he looks. Indeed. Just a face, though. He ran away too fast, Lioness added. At last, Raylan sighed, it might have been too much for me. Anyway, you get the gist. I don't have anything to talk about with you three other than the game. And you took too close an approach with your poaching. At least you can light up bonfires, Lioness patted his shoulder, and I don't mind. William and I were nothing but me trying to take a crown. I thought more about our families rather than us. And when I tried to be myself, he couldn't take me anymore. Ha ha. I like your character, Raylin said, that is because I also keep challenging myself. Thanks. Lioness replied briefly while staring into Raylin's eyes. It seemed like a mood unfurled before them. Still, the other teammates returned at last, and Steel Melody shouted at the pyromaniac. She said, Ray. Why did you stop sending fireballs? I thought how lucky I am that the specters don't bleed, Raylin arched his head back as he retorted. Steel Melody blushed and looked to the side, shut up. Ferocious Bear laughed, we have cleaned up the road ahead. I think we can enter the city now. It was her city as per the token, but Ferocious Bear didn't look like she came here to take things into her own hands. For her, it was a pleasant adventure across these five days where she had learned a lot from two older women. Dot Ray Lin knew that it had helped her heart greatly. However, it was the hero who got stronger, not the lady called Maya. He looked over at her cautiously, then said, let's head further. It's time to meet the noble and take the city from him. He turned his eyes to Lioness, I know you have passed some orders for Vis to take care of the management. But the hero has to deal with this by herself. Maya stared at Raylin with big eyes, then nodded after he glanced at her, I will do my best. Everyone agreed, then Steel Melody said, I hope that the noble will be a prick. So we will fight him. Hee <laughs> hee. So you want to make things harder for our hero. What a good friend you are, Raylin threw a glare at her. No. No. That's not it. I just want to fight. His knights will suffice. Steel Melody quickly apologized and explained herself. It's fine. I know what you meant, Steel Melody. I want some real opponents too. Maya didn't get offended, and she teamed up with the tank. These two smiled widely and led the group to the city. Tatham City. A city located the furthest to the south from the beginner city and the capital of the Blue Rose Kingdom. It was in the province of the same name and bordered the Bright Doom Kingdom. Many thought that these two kingdoms would give the territories next to the victors of the guild competition. Still, Lioness had confirmed that it wasn't the case. Vis and her guild weren't any close nearby. However, the whole province wasn't in a good state, and it had just one city functioning correctly. The reason for it was the specters. The players. Please, enter the city quickly. The guard shouted atop the wall. On their signal, the other guards pulled the switch, and the gates opened loudly. The sound drew the attention of surrounding specters, and they all rushed in tandem toward the city. Raylin and his party didn't dare to laze around, and they entered the city before the specters teamed the gates. After the gates closed, Raylin turned his eyes toward the guards, good work. The whole province was permeated by the ghastly mana. That mana belonged to specters, and it had shrouded the entire province. It erased the sun, ushering the eternal darkness. Darkness was the slightest problem, however. Yes, it had affected daily lives, 
but the coldness due to the ghastly manna was worse. It had been escalating ever since the whole province fell, and humans couldn't find comfort even in the thickest clothes available on the market. Their noble also failed to get good clothes or means to appease the cold, and many residents blamed him. His name was Naten. You don't have permission to see Master Naten, a knight in red armor said. He was donned from top to bottom, and no one could glance into his face. Though others couldn't see his eyes, he could see the hero's token well, and it was obvious that she came here to take the territory for herself. However, Master Naten wouldn't give up on his title. Master Naten's knight LV, 45, the hero looked at his level, then around the street. People made a big bonfire in the middle, then surrounded it while hugging each other. Those were mostly families, but even people without any relatives found someone to share some warmth with. They were weak and exhausted. Even the hero herself felt like she would soon begin to tremble. At least her defenses were higher due to her player status and the classes. But other residents had no one of these. I insist, Maya said. If you keep insisting, we will use force to banish you from our city, the Red Knight replied, then bared his spear. The hero's eyes rose, is that so? Then we will use strength. Seems like strength is really the only answer to such heartless people like you. Her sword left the sheath, and the golden light rose from it. Presumptuous. A spear charged at the hero immediately after the light shone. However, it didn't meet the hero, but the steel shield. Ha <laughs> ha. Steel Melody added her own tune to the exciting sound of steel, then shouted, So your master is a prick. Nice. Ah. No. That's wrong. Mmm. The hero is here. You aren't a hero, Ray Lin sneered from behind, I've been itching to let out my flames in this pitiful city. But more importantly, you sound too fine, knight. Ray Lin looked at Lioness. She sneered as well and added, you and Master Naten must have been doing pretty fine. Your reaction was also fast, meaning your body is surely in good shape. The flames rose, and the lioness sword also let out its mysterious glow. As those skills emerged, other knights joined the fray, and the battle within the city began. Raylin laughed, it's the hero's city, so keep the damage to the minimum. The teammates threw him a weird glance, who said it. Chapter 63 Evil Thoughts You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Master Naten inherited territory from his father. Although they were noble by birth, Naten felt like he was one of the workers for the Blue Rose Kingdom and that he was worse than a miner. He wasn't just working arduously, but he also faced many mental hardships. His family fought more than anyone else due to their province being one of the borders. Their land often split, and Naten's family also was forced to invade others to keep their heads high. It was war after war, and the borders had changed numerous times. Had it been not a fantasy world, cartographers would have significantly been bothered by that particular border. And many others. However, in Naten's case, he just thought about himself and how unfair his life was compared to other noble families. After the dark times had been announced, Naten thought that things would change and everyone would face the same fate. Alas, his province turned out to be one of the worst again. It was worse than constant wars since the residents were drawn into the nobles' plight. The coldness scratched their bodies, the hunger gnawed from within, and the sun ran away. That was so bad that Naten couldn't bear to see his people. He tried to take things into his matters, to no avail. Spectres were in abundant numbers, and their bodies proved to be a challenge. It was not an easy feat to cut through their ghost-like forms, and the environment was already too polluted by them. The Blue Rose Kingdom also couldn't send their people here. People couldn't level up, and the kingdom carefully ordered those who could level up just like players. They hadn't sent anyone here, and their resources were also destroyed by the specters. Thus, Naten decided. We will live in abundance until the whole province falls to the specters. It wasn't particularly a hard choice. For all those years, his family had been fighting with the bright Doom Kingdom's noble household. 
In the plight that touched the whole province, the Blue Rose Kingdom decided to just leave them alone. Naten's knights were of the same mind. Their families settled in Naten's household. Dot using the only retrieved resource from the Blue Rose Kingdom, Naten warmed up the whole land and spent his days healthy. At the same time, the rest of the city endured the disaster. Therefore, the knights followed him and his decision. His decision to repel the hero. A group of players with levels worse than ours. They will be able to deal with our situation as they keep growing in strength, but how many sacrifices will it take? How many days until they get strong enough to expel the ghastly mana? Naten said to the knights around him and their families. He brought wine to his lips, they also came straight for the ownership to me, meaning that their goal is to share our only treasure. The treasure warmed their land and allowed them to keep the land arable. The plan was to withstand the plight and wait for players with much higher levels. Those players would be able to quickly deal with the difficulty, and everyday life would return. But the hero and her party would only make things more dangerous, and her presence was a bother to Naten's eyes. Raylin brought his flames onto the street and just hurt the knights. He controlled his fire well, and no resident was hurt through it. His party was also doing great, and they were winning despite the level gap. If they killed those knights, a lot of EXP would have filled their bars. However, the city would soon belong to the hero. Maya didn't want residents to look at the grotesque scene while they endured such a disaster. The knights dropped onto the ground, and it was time to reveal the truth. Raylin stared at the hero, but he felt someone nudging his leg before Maya took off the red helmet. It was a woman around Lioness' age. She hugged Raylin's leg tightly, and his clothes warmed her more than anything before. Her trembling significantly decreased, and her quivering lips tried to say something. On her face, relief rippled, and she eased up. Raylin glanced at her, then shifted his eyes to Lioness, do you think we would be able to cooperate? Your bonfire has useful passive skills for this land, and I think I can make my flames burn for longer than a normal one. Arya replied, I don't know whether we would be able to combine our skills. Am I a person that wouldn't like to try it, though? We should log a few trees first. Sure. The hero got a message from the duo, then Raylin and Arya left the city to prepare a bonfire for the whole town. Any normal fire wouldn't work in this province, but who was Raylin? Ferocious bear and steel melody glanced behind at their disappearing backs, then retracted their eyes to look at the soldier who looked better than the residents. Of course, these two girls thought about his health condition. His skin was healthy, and he didn't have any black circles below his eyes. That man wasn't skinny either, and he just moved well. No one would be able to exert that much strength should they be as sick as the residents. Why? Why am I meeting so many bad people lately? Maya trembled while looking at the knight's face. Her heart beat faster, and evil thoughts manifested within. She wanted to drop her sword and smash her fists on his face. It wouldn't be just one punch, but many so that even the knight's mother wouldn't be able to recognize him. The more she stared at him, the darker her heart became. At last, Maya dropped her sword and kicked the knight's face. Steel Melody's eyes widened, and she stopped questioning the knight. She then saw Ferocious Bear becoming just like her nickname stated, and the girl saddled the man with her fists raining down his face. Ah! Ah! The Red Knight cried as the hero's strength was her second highest stat. He tried to cover his face, but the hero's fists broke his forearm's bones, and he could no longer move them. Once his face became free, the hero continued to pummel his face. Other knights flinched and took a few steps back, but Steel Melody pinned them down with her eyes and taunt. Maya also noticed their reaction, whose idea was it? Master Naten Chapter 64 Feeling you are listening at NovelFull.audio If you are short on items, you can just keep your eyes on surroundings, Lioness said with a wide smile, I will wrap it up in no time. No need. This game is too realistic. I felt too many emotions from these people. 
A sin of being astute, I guess. Ray Lin replied, it was like someone scratched my heart, and it began bleeding. Lioness faintly smiled, you've made many people's wallets bleed. That's what they felt. Both of them chuckled while logging the trees. The player's inventory space increased as the player leveled up, and external items also helped. Lioness inventory was the most spacious, but even it couldn't store the whole tree within. Other than logging the tree, the duo also would need to split it into a few parts. It would take some time, but these two had a few topics to talk about. They were well aware of each other's identities, and the game also kept them interested. The Adventure Class That sounds like a class I might enjoy, Raylin replied after Lioness explained her bonfire skill. She received it from the Adventurer NPC. Adventurers were known far back in the past, but their occupation slowly died with the mercenaries' rise. The difference between those was that the adventurers would roam the world in search of treasures. They would get clues from various people and try their best to find something. In the meantime, they would enjoy the world. They lived with the world, and they were pretty saving. On the other hand, mercenaries would do the same, but they would follow specific orders. They wouldn't roam the world in search of but to get the job done. In a way, those two were quite similar, but the mercenaries would always ask for money and clear directions. If the directions failed them, they would still ask for at least 50% of their money for their time. Adventurers lived with nature, and money wasn't their main priority. The biggest difference was that the adventurers roamed the world, and the mercenaries slowly shifted their services to one or two provinces. People slowly stopped roaming the world and enjoyed fame in their lands, working dangerously as mercenaries. I am not surprised the adventurers died, Ray Lin replied, eventually, people want to establish themselves somewhere and create a family. Still, mercenaries seem like more profitable work that comes with more significant benefits. If an adventurer died somewhere, no one would know. But the disappearance of the strong mercenary would stir some chaos. Adventurers were free, though, Arya replied, that's an occupation that just ignores the worst of this world. I wouldn't mind being an adventurer from time to time and seeing nothing but beautiful nature. But I've been dealing with the worst of this world for so long I became one too. I just threw bombs at them, Raylin rolled his eyes, you are in a business world too, though. I can't really relate as I am not a businessman. The game is one open business, though and it gives us more options. You will be pulled into our world soon enough, Arya smiled widely, then the sudden message erased her smile. Ferocious bear has died. Another one promptly followed it. Steel Melody has died. Raylan's face contorted, they didn't even notify us. Lioness nodded. After waiting for a while, Raylan saw that Steel Melody respawned. He called her through voice chat and invited Lioness in to listen. B.O. Steel Melody responded to their call as quickly as she could, I am sorry. I couldn't tank that guy. He ignored my taunt. Fuck that taunt, Ray Lin replied, why didn't you notify us? We are not even that far away, and mere specters can't stop us. That's because. Maya went too mad. A sadness and confusion mixed on Steel Melody's heart as she explained what had happened before their death. Apparently, Ferocious Bear acted too weirdly. That happened when the Red Knight's helmet dropped, and Ray Lin already connected the dots from this alone. He was only half surprised after listening to Maya beating the knight with her bare fists. Ray Lin sighed and said, just take the carriage and come here. We will deal with the city situation first. Yes. Steel Melody replied loudly. Raylin called Maya then, but she just said, we died. I was too rash. Do you think I would throw myself at the opponent with LV-100? Raylin just asked her this question and cut the call. After he did it, he sighed heavily and turned toward the city, it seems like Master Naten has an item to keep his land warm and arable. I will deal with it in my own way. I can't believe Maya did that. 
she didn't seem like a person who would be this impulsive. And your reaction earlier. If you need help with the girl, then tell me, Lioness said. It wasn't her poaching, but Arya was genuinely worried about Maya. The game was too real, and one could take their problems from real life here. It went both ways, and solo players often could face many problems. Raylin said, she needs time. And I know how to deal with it. I believe you, Lioness replied. The duo entered the city without any problem. The guards saw the battle in the city, but they still allowed the players to enter the city. It meant a lot, but Raylin just faced them bluntly, we will fix the situation. In a few hours, my friends will return. Open the gates for them and join the rest in the middle. They nodded to Raylin's words. Raylin called other guards and told them to call out everyone to the city center. That was where he and Lioness would make a big bonfire. Of course, the center wouldn't store everyone here, but the big bonfire should spread its warmth a little beyond it. It's like you already possess a skill with me, Lioness chuckled. Raylin replied with confidence, my flames never disappoint. And I have a feeling you won't disappoint me either. If I happen to disappoint you, just slap my cheeks again. That's confidence. Let me spice it up, though. What cheek? Both. There are cheeks here. And here, though. I will let you decide. But be ready for the consequence of your choice should I really disappoint, Arya stared at Ray Lin, then they combined their skills for the first time. Chapter 65 Bonfire Success You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 65 Bonfire Success, You have left the party. Ray Lin left the party first. That was because the game mechanics were quite complicated. Arya already had used Raylan's flames for her bonfire. It made a bonfire for the whole party, and everyone could enjoy it. It wasn't a real combination, however. First, it worked only for the party, and the flames' quality didn't matter. Any external fire would be fine for her skill. Raylan planned to prepare a bonfire that would burn for a long time, and his fire would be the main and the most unique ingredient. The combination would not only influence the party but the whole city. That would be like a real combination that required a lot of focus and skills. After Lioness had used her skill, Raylin threw the fireball. His fireball was quite big, and many residents gawked at it with astonishment. Although no one of them wielded mana the way players did, the residents could tell the fireball's uniqueness. Besides, the warmth licked their bodies already. It didn't take a genius to see that Raylin was a great mage. His fireball slammed against the tree's pieces, and the flame pillar rose. I didn't disappoint, Arya commented from the other side. The adventurer's bonfire has been used. Your stamina. She saw the usual messages flashing in the corner of her eyes. It was pointless to read them as just the first message stated that their combination skill worked. But to make sure that the user knew it, the last message popped. Ray Flames Lin's fire has extended the bonfire's longevity. It will burn for the whole month. The bonfire's passive skills will remain intact for the whole duration. Do you really use normal fire skills? Lioness asked after she'd approached Ray Lin. Both of them stared at the bonfire with complacent faces, then Raylin closed his eyes. On his face, a pride transpired, and his smirk was quite taunting for the lioness. Those are my flames, he replied, then backed off as residents crawled their way closer to the bonfire. Arya followed him. She didn't forget to remark how taunting his smile was, and it made Raylin smile wider. She spun around and looked at the relieved residents, and a pure smile soon bloomed on her face. A silence unfurled between them, and they stared at the bonfire for some time. Big, just as I like, Raylin broke the silence, let's check the noble's household now. And without waiting for Lioness' reply, Raylin turned heels and strutted toward Master Naten's household. Lioness glanced at his back, threw her hair behind, and followed him, will we fight Naten or retreat should he appear before us? 
If Raylin wanted to infiltrate, he wouldn't have pulled her along with himself. It was just a stroll around the noble household, so Lioness asked a crucial question while following him. She followed her father mostly in her life, but that also quickly changed, and she stood next to him while doing business. Of course, the younger Lioness didn't like following others around, and she was more haughty back then. It had been a long time, so the current Lioness was quite conflicted inside. The same, or at least familiar, emotions flashed on her face while following Ray Lin. That lasted just a little, however. And Arya didn't know whether it was because she matured or Ray Lin was that different. Ray Lin replied, Retreat. This is the hero's city. He fanned his face with warm air, then added, If we beat Naten with just two of us, the hero and the masochist would be sulky for a while. And just as I said, this is the hero's city. We can only lend a hand. Okay, Lioness replied, and they walked while talking about the bonfire and the people's relief. At last, the noble household spread before them. Those were just walls, however. That was Naten's private land, and residents would have long since invaded the land had there been no walls. For many similar reasons, the nobles built the walls. Of course, the walls boasted the best architecture, and it left the residents imagining what was on the other side. Raylin touched the wall, his eyes squinting, I will have my hand get used to that warmth, then just steal it. Huh, Lioness chuckled, steal. For yourself. Nope. I will have some jewelry as a reward for my hard work, though. Raylin replied with the same smile, we will use that warmth to fuel the bonfire and make it last even longer. For that, I need some preparation. Stay on guard, and let me focus. That's what I wanted to do, Arya replied, stressing out her thoughts before scrutinizing the area around. Raylin just laughed at her unwillingness, you are my prize for this adventure. There's no shame in following me and my orders. And it's not like I am streaming right now, Arya. If you did, I would have stolen the spotlight, Lioness sneered, then became silent as Raylin also focused on his current task. Ferocious Bear has joined the party. Steel Melody has joined the party. At last, these two had returned. It was faster than their adventure due to the carriage, but the transport didn't bring them straight to Tatham City. It was naturally due to the specters going around and their ghastly mana influencing the whole province. No sane resident would conduct business here. Only the desperate would, but Maya and Steel Melody didn't have time to search for such a person. On their return, Steel Melody greeted the duo back, then her eyes widened at the bonfire, it's so warm here. We also won't get affected by the cold. This is our base now. She was in high spirits, and the death didn't leave any bitterness behind. On the other hand, Ferocious Bear was silent all time long, and her head hung down. She didn't reveal any of her natural cuteness, and it seemed like many thoughts crossed her mind. Raylin welcomed them back, it will be our base soon. He corrected Steel Melody first, then turned his eyes to Ferocious Bear, are you ready to fight him again? Maya's eyes rose, and she silently nodded. You two still need to rest. Enjoy the bonfire while I prepare two important items. And we will draw the noble out, so we will fight him in a few days at most. Eh. So what are we going to do for a few days? Steel Melody complained on the spot. Raylin glared at her, go and hunt specters, maybe. I will lend you my staff. That's fine with me. Let's go. How damn simple, dot. Chapter 66 Two statues you are listening at novel full dot audio. What will you prepare? Lioness asked with her eyes ahead on the grassland. The hero and the tank had been fighting here after their rest, and they were doing great as expected. Raylan's black staff lent its mana, and Lioness was on guard for their mage. Her eyes shifted to Raylin, who took out the ore, I have flame artist class. His flames burst out of his palm, and it began licking the whole ore. 
Seeing how the iron ore melted under the ravenous fire, Lioness' eyes widened, and she looked at the skill with her interest piqued. Raylin got a rough iron, since you shared your adventure class, I will do the same. No. I am genuinely interested in what you can create out of it, Arya explained her emotions rippling in her eyes, I guess you don't have any limitations, and you can work with any or from the get.go. Oh. Your impression of me has raised to this level already. You know my fire well. Raylan's self.complacent smile irritated Lioness, and she grasped his hair. She said, your flames made the bonfire up for the whole month. You also blew my entire army with those fireballs. I would have looked down on you if you couldn't process every ore from the beginning. We aim for a high standard. Well, to answer your question. We have to deal with the nobles' resistance toward the taunt. I have an idea for that, so you can look forward to it. The other is to steal their warmth. This is how we will draw the noble out and make his whole army give up on him. I refuse to believe he had sent his whole army when we fought them for the first time. That's just obvious, Lioness scoffed. After the iron appeared, Raylan's flame artist class followed his wish. His flames became more precise, and they were like a brush that melted the iron. The flame artist carefully controlled his flames while giving meaning to his creation. His flames didn't disappoint Raylin and his artistic soul, then they slowly and shyly disappeared out of the world. Raylin looked at his creation and chuckled, I thought of creating a lioness, but I have one next to me. This is the flame-devouring dog. Would a person without any artistic skills be able to create it? You haven't followed any system guidelines, have you? Lioness asked while looking at the dog. It was a small statue that took Raylan's palm. However, the statue represented the dangerous beast. The dog gave off a natural threatening aura, and one could tell it spat out flames due to the fire escaping both sides of its wide mouth. If one stared for too long into its eyes, one would think it was a living beast. Raylin smiled, I don't care about others. Still, I can tell you that I could only create crown rings at first. My skills and flames keep advancing as I use them, so I expected good results today. What I didn't expect was that I would succeed on the first try. Good job, then, Lioness replied. Inwardly, she was pretty relieved that Raylin wasn't a total monster in the game. That also led her to another thought, how many complaints do you receive daily, I wonder. The company behind this game must be fed up with your name. Am I the only one with unique skills? Ray Lin chuckled. Since he was on a good streak, he decided to quickly make the second item. He put the iron dog into his inventory, then took out one ore and thing. The item piqued Lioness interest on the spot. That was because it was the red eye amulet. That was the item Raylin had received from the Dark Matter Waves. It was a fantastic item that could taunt many enemies. Raylin estimated it would even be able to taunt the boss around level 60, but his goal was to use a little of that item for his creation. Since it could taunt such strong enemies, a little of it should be enough for the noble. Raylin also had a strong belief in his flame artist class. A little of its flames should make a perfect one-dot-use item against Master Naten. He looked at the amulet. Its design was quite simple, but it gave off a more menacing aura than Raylan's iron dog. In short, it was a red gem that was shaped after an ice sealed in the black frame. Raylan cut a little of the red game, fuck. The normal knife won't work. His knife shattered quickly, but Lioness was here to assist him. She pointed her tip at the item and slipped her sword in. She exerted a lot of her strength to take out a small part, then cursed, it has to be some unique item from the boss. Fuck, I want a bath. Then go and take one. I don't need any guard, to begin with, Raylin shrugged after thanking Lioness for her help. He then melted the broken part and joined it with the ore he had stolen from the Northern River's bank. Lioness cut in, I will wait for your creation, then go ahead. She was highly interested in the second creation. Sure, Raylin replied, his eyes on the blending gems. 
Dot after the same process, Raylan's second creation came out. It was an old man. However, Arya recognized that face. It was Raylan's grandpa. Grandpa always had that presence. He always wore a crown, and no one questioned him nor his requests, Raylin faintly smiled while looking at the statue. That grandpa died when Raylin was ten. On rare occasions, Raylin would face him during his childhood. Grandpa was relatively mild for Raylin, but that presence never faded, even on the deathbed. You brothers like to slip in the crown references, Arya smiled widely, I hope your grandpa's statue will work. It will hurt his name should it not work. If grandpa's statue won't influence that cheap noble, I will burn the whole company's business. That's when they will be fed up with me, Ray Lin said in a lower tone, his eyes letting out a sharp glitter. Seeing his face, Arya's heart skipped a beat, and she nodded in silence. Chapter 67 Good friend you are listening at novel full dot audio. Ray Lin returned to Tatham City. He left his party outside since the hero and others needed to vent their emotions on the specters. His heart was in a much better state, and Lioness would take care of these two should anything terrible happen. Raylin gawked at the bonfire from afar. People treated it like a deity already, and many tents surrounded it. The residents dropped their work and settled in the warmest spot in the city. Of course, it wasn't like they had anything to work with. In such an environment, they barely lived off on potatoes. Those potatoes tasted much better after Raylin and Arya's bonfire prepared it for them. No internal fights, Raylin whispered. That wasn't odd since the residents barely had any strength to move. They also quickly found out that the bonfire's warmth didn't decrease further away from it, and it mainly stood the same. It still couldn't take care of the whole city, however. But even without the leader, the residents helped each other and made some room for others. They kept changing spots from time to time. That made things easier for the hero, good people for a good leader. Raylin fished out his iron dog statue, then strutted toward the bonfire. On his way, residents stepped to the side to let him move freely. They thanked him for the help, but Raylin gave all credits to the hero, it's all ferocious bears doing. Do you guys think I would have done it without any monetary gain? That's true. The residents lowered their eyes. She's known as the hero, and she spent all her money to get the white dot haired woman you've seen before and me. It's not just this world's currency, but the one I am from too. She paid in both worlds. Right now, she is outside fighting the specters to find the clues to their ghastly mana. We will help deal with it as per our contract, then you probably won't see me around. Raylin contributed everything to the hero, then threw the iron dog into the bonfire, this is yet another item she had paid for. It will increase the bonfire's longevity as it's currently hard to find any clues. We shall thank the hero then. But even if you've been paid to do all of it, you are also our hero. Please, accept our gratitude. The residents bowed. Raylin just took out his fan and enjoyed the warm breeze, not denying nor accepting their words. He looked forward to the system messages. And his first statue didn't disappoint him. Your iron dog has been planted in the adventurer's bonfire. It has connected to the flames. Its greedy nature has found out another source of flames. Although it wasn't visible to the naked eye, the dog began sucking out the warmth Master Naten had created with his only resource. He would only notice the change in a few days, just as Raylin had predicted. With Iron Dog hidden in the bonfire, Raylin turned heels and returned to the hero's side. Why did you do it? Maya shouted at Raylin. He didn't reply and just stared at her. She once again repeated, You can't just give me all the credits. I don't like it. Everyone worked here, and their journey consisted of the four. They had a lot of fun. Even though Maya made a mistake before, she already forgot about it and focused on becoming stronger. She wanted to help the residents together with others. And now, Raylin just revealed what he had said to others. I thought we were friends. 
Maya let out her last words, then turned heels. She disappeared on the horizon together with Steel Melody and Lioness. It was time for a girly talk, and Ray Lin didn't want to explain himself anyway. He just took out his notes and began studying them again. Maya. He wouldn't have helped you if he didn't consider you a friend, Lioness explained in a soft voice after these three distanced themselves from Raylin. Ferocious Bear shook her head, I still don't like it. We've come here together. It's like he just wants to have some fun, drop all the credit, then disappear from my life. I really thought we were friends and that this city would become our home here. If Raylin doesn't want to become my guild member, then he can leave. But why does he distance himself? Am I that weak? The last sentence was whispered in a barely audible tone. On her knees, Maya hugged her sheathed sword and nearly burst out crying. These two didn't know what had happened and what was precisely coursing through the hero's mind. But all this time, Maya had been avoiding real life. She felt too weak here, but she could become a stronger person in the game world. But after she made a mistake, Raylin covered her up again, and then he just dropped all credits for her. An incident from real life flashed, and the hero became scared. Okay, okay. Lioness patted the hero's hair, you are weak, and what's so bad about it? My whole guild is full of weak people, and just my siblings possess unique classes. Under my leadership, they can feel strength and pride. But should they have even not a hint of their courage and strength, they would have been dumped by me already. You possess strength, Maya. Dot. If Raylin could shove all the credits up to you, you can do something similar. That is only if you have strength, Arya chuckled and left the hero thinking. After some time, Ferocious Bear stood up, Raylin said that it would take a few days for Master Naten to attack us. She wiped her eyes and added, I will help residents on my own before the evil noble attacks. What's your plan, the hero? Steel Melody asked, quite excited. There's a boss in the neighboring province. It's a big bear, and he will provide us with a lot of meat. My goal is to gather a lot of food for residents before we take the whole city. Maya explained. The boss was naturally surrounded by his buddies, and the hero would gather a lot of meat for the city. After she had said her plan out loud, confidence bloomed on the hero's face, and she prepared herself for future events. The three ladies left the province. Lioness had already informed Ray Lin about it, and he didn't keep Lioness around himself for the hero. For he was a good friend. Chapter 68 Abandoned by the whole city you are listening at NovelFull.audio after a few days, Ray Lin and the hero had gathered before their bonfire. The residents usually surrounded it, but as per the hero's request, they all shifted to one side. That was because today was a special day. Master Naten has already noticed that I am stealing his resources energy. He sent his knights here, and they confirmed it through another item. Ray Lin explained. So you've gone ahead and just notified him of your power, Lioness added. Correct. Raylin nodded. After that, Master Naten confirmed the residents' movements. Everything lined up for the final battle over the city, and Master Naten wasn't stupid enough to not take a risk. He ordered all his forces to leave the household, and their march shook the whole city. The earthquake announced it. Residents all looked into each other's eyes, and no one cheered for their noble. They all wanted the players to win and continue their development here. Many also took pride in being the first city under the players' control. Each to their own, but no one supported Master Naten. Even the guards that protected the city around didn't show any support on their faces. Their equipment was used to ensure the residents' safety. Raylin, Maya, Steel Melody, and Lioness stood at the helm. Their eyes expanded after Master Naten appeared with his army before them. He was donned in an armor adequate to his status with many pieces of jewelry adorning it. His golden armor was also made out of purified gold, and it boasted a high resistance power. It also increased his strength and emphasized his royal bloodline. 
what was the royal bloodline's main ability? The ability to always have one's head high. The taunt and any other crowd control skills were heavily limited against the nobles. Of course, with the better bloodline, the offensive skills emerged. Master Naten just possessed the most common passive skill, but that was a challenge for all players who hadn't trod in the game world for too long. Master Naten located the hero, you are the lady with the token for my city. It's all you're doing that it has become like this. The hero raised her voice, like what? This city's people have been doing much better after we have appeared. You are, and you probably always will be, an evil noble. I won't waste my time with you. You insolent young lady. Master Naten's face became red, and a vein throbbed on his temple. Close your dirty mouth. Maya replied in response, I don't have anything to talk about with you. Let the sword speak. I didn't expect you to be this smart dot mouthed after your loss against me. Let me clarify something. I am utterly disgusted by you, players. After I killed you, you two just returned as if nothing had happened. You no longer remember a pool of blood your faces had soaked in. You no longer remember the pain across your bodies as I cut you with my sword. You just return here as if nothing happened and face me with even more insolence. Master Naten responded loudly. That was the truth, however. Players would be warier about the NPCs they had faced beforehand, and some would develop fear against those who had killed them. It all depended on the player, but some would be more scared of monster NPC and some of the humans. Maya felt neither as she had developed a genuine hatred toward Master Naten. If she failed, she would return stronger. She was a perfect example of rinse and repeat. Who asked? Maya replied in her usual voice, but a little louder. Why dot you? Master Naten stuttered. She sounded cute, but hatred also mixed in. Her confidence was also palpable, and her friends chuckled and smiled toward her. Raylin clapped his hands, well said, hero. He turned his eyes to the Red Army. Those Red Knights were a problem for the group of four players. Not only were their levels higher, but they were also led by the noble himself. Naturally, Raylin prepared some words for them. He targeted them with his piercing eyes while fanning his face, just as Naten said, we can die and come back. Your reason for coming here. Me stealing your power. I am fueling the bonfire with that power, but I don't mind stealing it for other purposes. What does that mean? Well, I can slowly take your only safe ground and make you suffer the fate worse than the residents. Oh. Wait for a second. You all can just come closer to the bonfire. Poor citizens. Raylin shook his head, and all residents trembled, including the Red Knights. It was easy for the knights to just shelter themselves and their families in the noble territory, but stealing the residents' only source of warmth and food was a different matter. In the former, they just gave up, but they would personally affect many lives in the latter. That kind of burden became quite heavy, and their hearts trembled loudly. The citizens also let out their voices, Hero. Please, don't abandon us. Banish the evil. We will support the hero. Hero. The voice of people became overwhelming for the Red Knights. Even the hero herself looked around, but no words came out of her lips. She knew that Raylin was doing it to control the Red Knights, so careless words would have hurt his plan. Maya remained stoic without any emotion rippling in her eyes. As for Raylin, he chuckled, People make a city. If you defeat us and take the bonfire away, we will still find a way to enter the city. We are players, our means are infinite. That is why Red Knights. Will you raise your swords at us, or will you swear loyalty for the hero? My sword has never wavered, but now, it just did. One of the Red Knights said, it's the voice of people that reached me. At last, his sword dropped, and he left the Red Army. He stepped toward the citizens who were quite scared of him. Their hatred also reached his heart, but the knight kept his heart steel. His back soon faced them, 
and he silently protected them from harm. Following those words, many knights passed through Raelin and others. They protected the residents and abandoned their nobles. In a few minutes, Master Naten became alone, with just his family supporting him. However, they were alone against the Red Army that had been their sword for many years. Master Naten bit his lips, then fished out a royal token, I've been the master of this land and city for years. I have my. He stopped because of the statue resting on Raylan's palm. The statue of Crown Grandpa had its own beaming, and its taunt utterly stopped the royal bloodline. It worked perfectly, and Master Naten just stared at the statue with his body frozen. His family was worse as they dropped onto the knees. Even though they had the same bloodline, they groveled before Ray Lin, which sullied their surname. Master Naten heard them dropping onto the ground, and his lips became free, not only my sword disappointed me, but even my own family. How dare you! That is nothing but a statue of a worthless commoner. In mere seconds, I will free. My dot self. The atmosphere became hotter for some reason. Only Lioness understood, however. She peeked at Raylan's eyes and whispered, Someone is going to die. Chapter 69 Royalty You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Master Naten didn't believe the players had brought an item strong enough to hold him for a good while. He already exerted his royal bloodline, to no avail. Shock rippled on his face, and he widened his eyes in disbelief. The taunt effect from the Crown Grandpa's statue kept pinning him down, and he soon found out the wrath manifesting itself. At least it looked like wrath as Ray Lin let flames out of his whole body. Those flames howled at the noble but luckily were restrained by the owner himself. Otherwise, the whole city would have been blown up by the red sky already. Raylan's face was stoic, but killing intent shone within his hues. Fireball On his left palm, a fireball emerged. The fireball promptly sucked the flames coming off Raylan, and it began growing up in size and strength. Had Grandpa's statue not worked on you, I would have destroyed the lives of every player in this world, then I would have sued the company if they were to ban me. In both ways, I would have destroyed the game company's business. All for the grandpa, I respect. The game developers are fortunate. However, the same cannot be said about you, Raylin directed those words at Master Naten. The nobleman didn't understand the first part much, but he knew he touched Raylin's reverse scale. Raylin chuckled and threw his fireball. His family was his weak point as Raylin loved everyone deeply. Although he had never shown it, that was indeed the case. His family gave him everything, and Raylin could have pursued his hobbies and freedom. Of course, many wanted Raylin to take a proper path in his life, mainly his mother. Still, even she never demanded him or imposed any career. Other families and peers often mentioned Raylin and his excesses. His peers were the victims of those excesses, mainly due to their loud mouths. Thus, Raylin loved his family, and his grandpa, who also received his respect, was someone who couldn't be called a worthless commoner. Boom! The fireball splashed on Master Naten's armor. 0.405 HP. That's too small. I guess it has to be the armor, Raylin narrowed his eyes, take it off, and we will get rid of him. Wouldn't it be bad for our future, though? Maya asked worriedly. Raylin replied, we will tell them what this man did and have the residents show their support toward you through their signatures. After you deal with the province's problem, the Blue Rose Kingdom will see it with their eyes. Don't overthink about it. Yes. The hero nodded. Master Naten heard their talking and his face grew redder from both the insolence and the taunt's oppressive power. Even though any normal taunt would have long since worn off, Raylan's grandpa statue continued to taunt him. He slowly trod toward them, and his sword would move on its own should they enter his reach. His royal bloodline meant nothing in the presence of the crown. Of course, it meant that Master Naten needed an opponent. Steel Melody was more than glad to take that spot, and she happily lunged at him, second round, you prick. 
Master Naten howled in response. Their swords clashed, and Steel Melody immediately lost that clash. Her shield rose to protect her, and the most favorite melody rang out in her ears, I should focus more on my swordsmanship. It's because of the level gap, Lioness consoled her from the side. Their opponent was in full armor, but Lioness had her own tricks. She focused on one spot, and her skill that had tormented Ray Lin before worked on the armor instead. It was known as bleeding, but Lioness could bring similar effects against armors and other bloodless creatures. After the third party member hacked from the side, Master Naten became besieged from the four sides. Raylan's black staff spat flamethrower from behind, Master Naten's back its primary target. I blame my ignorance. Tell me, what kind of bloodline is this? Master Naten roared while his sword basically moved on its own. The royalties were used to fighting with their bodies free, and the taunt skills were deemed useless against them. Even if the noble bloodline happened to be purer or stronger, the taunt could have never been this oppressive unless the royal lineage from the direct throne used their blood against him. For a second, Master Naten thought of something absurd. He was at a loss on his own thoughts, and his sword slowed down. But the moment this thought popped into his mind, he couldn't shake it off, and it began eating him from the inside. Perhaps. He whispered out loud, you are the royalty from another world. Naten was pretty much confined to his province, and he had just heard rumors about the players. He heard how absurd and childish they could be and how they treated the world as a game. Their respawn ability was absurd, and that made them reckless. Thus, NPCs believed that most players were commoners or people with cheap backgrounds. Should royalty from another world appear, they would approach the nobility in a way similar to Brand. They would use their money and begin a pretty serious relationship. With how the hero approached him, Master Naten didn't think of that kind of possibility. Instead, he was sure that the players had come here for some gaming and fun. Alas, that was a mistake, and he faced the crown. Raylin just smiled, and that kind of smile made Naten's lips quiver. His weapon dropped, and he gawked at Ray Lin, who stood behind with a statue on his palm. So much for a noble, Ray Lin sighed, any last words. He started approaching Na Ten. On the other hand, Na Ten just stood silent. He looked back to the past where the Blue Rose Kingdom's direct bloodline flaunted their abilities. Those who did it mainly were the royal children, and their level had been relatively low back then in gamer terms. Royalties could level up just like players, and that was what had relieved many residents. Naten tried to compare them with Raylin. He personally saw the royal children, and their presence at that level couldn't even be comparable to what Raylin had right now. Of course, Raylin used the statue, but the same went for the royal children. They all used equipment provided by their kingdom. Spare my family. Even if it means stripping their status to that of a commoner, I beg for their survival, Master Naten knelt. Raylin clenched his hair tightly, they will live unless they say the same words as you. You have used the flamethrower. You have killed Master Naten. You have leveled up. You have. That guy said something weird, didn't he? Steel Melody looked at the disappearing body of Master Naten, then said with her eyes on everyone from her party, did he call Ray royalty? That was quite funny. Ray is William's wannabe. Ha ha. No way he is crown. He's so different compared to them. Why don't you know them? Lioness said while stuttering. She had faced many challenges in her life, but now she struggled to hold her laughter. With her hand on her lips, she asked Steel Melody. Steel Melody nodded, who doesn't? They always somehow appear on advertisements or featured profiles. She tilted her head, you also look similar to a certain person. You must be seeing things. Lioness chuckled. They feature a lot of channels and profiles, so that's probably it. I like to scroll through pets' profiles. My favorite one is Dogushiba. Steel Melody puffed her chest as she mentioned her favorite pet profile. Ferocious Bear flinched, K. 
Kitty Moo is better. She shouted with her hands clenched. Eh. Dogs are better. Steel Melody retorted. And these two began talking about pets while the blood and gore had happened just a few minutes ago. One could see blood on their equipment, and yet their talk made it seem like these two had fought against themselves. Raylin glanced at Lioness, she's probably a cat person too. He thought, then loudly said, dogs are better. I mean, cats just lays around, but dogs are quite active animals. And in the worst case, they will protect you. Steel Melody and Ferocious Bear glanced at him. One was happy and kept nodding while the other felt betrayed. Lioness chimed in, domesticated lion would protect the best either way. Are you serious? These two shifted their attention from Raylin to Lioness and asked in a quite disbelieving tone. Lioness nodded, yeah. Maya mumbled out, lions are scary. Raylin threw a weird glance, so the bears are. Mmm. Maya couldn't find an argument. Wow. You can buy a lion. Steel Melody asked, and a silence ensued. Yeah. Lioness replied after a while. Chapter 70 Mother's Visit You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 70 Mother's Visit The Pet Talk was stopped by residents who had approached the players with thankful expressions. Their noble had heavily disappointed them, and the players did more than enough already. Of course, the hero came here with the token that would give her ownership of the whole city, so they knew that she would continue to support them. Maya nodded first and approached them, it's not over yet. Master Naten was an evil guy, but the specters are the worst out of the worst. We must take care of them, and I will mobilize my guild to do so. Hero. Thank you so much. This is the will of Ascended. They've sent you for us. The Ascended. The residents dropped onto their knees and thanked both Heavens and the Hero. They gave all their support to the players, and the Red Knights quickly followed the same. In fact, their families knelt before them. Maya was quite overwhelmed again, but she regained her composure fast enough, my guild won this territory in the guild competition conducted by the Blue Rose Kingdom. I will do my best to keep it and return it to its former glory. However. I couldn't do it without my friends. I know that one of them told you some weird things, such as me paying him a lot of money, but that's not the case. Maya pointed her finger at Ray Lin, he is just shy. Oh. The handsome hero is shy. The residents thought out loud. Maya giggled, yes. All eyes fell on Ray Lin who remained stoic. He stared back at them, and no response from him somewhat confirmed the hero's words. Of course, Raylin knew that the hero took a lot of courage and resolution to reach such a stage. Even without it, he wouldn't have thrown a tantrum as it would be just pointless. He shrugged and turned around, Naten's land is the hero's land now. I will check it now. Raylin was interested in the treasure Naten received from the kingdom. He wouldn't steal it but just check its stats and use it for the city. He went toward it with Lioness by his side. The residents nodded, he's really shy. Good luck, hero. Good luck with that. Maya tilted her head as she asked. Ladies chuckled, men snickered, and all of them clapped their hands. Earth. Raylin took off his VR helmet and sighed, each party must be balanced. And dealing with girls is not over yet. He had been dealing with girls for nearly two weeks now, and that was quite a problem. It would be good if he had a male companion as well. Still, Vis was busy with managing Lioness Guild territory. At least Lioness somehow filled that gap when they were alone. Raylin turned his eyes to the side and found a woman sitting on the chair. She was a beautiful woman whose eyes rested on Raylin's face. Once he looked at her, her staring mellowed, and she faintly smiled. She sat on the chair with her silver hair combed into a bun, and her choice of clothes made it seem like those were made just for her. And as Ray Lin called her, happiness bloomed on her face. Mother. Ray Lin quietly said. 
I didn't expect to see you here, Ray Lin, Crown Eva said. Well, the gaming is quite devouring, Ray Lin chuckled and sat down. His mother's words didn't surprise him as Ray Lin always ran out before his birthday. It would usually be a week before it so that his family wouldn't pull him into any weird birthday party. He didn't like big parties, and that was a known and understandable fact. Eva smiled widely, is it really gaming? Perhaps having fun with girls is more engrossing. Looking at his mother, Ray Lin saw that her mental health was much better after he had entered the game. She was even more lively toward him, and she began asking about girls his age. Before, Eva didn't dare because girls would have become another weak point for Ray Lin should he become possessive. It would mean more explosions, and Eva didn't want to imagine what chaos it could grow up to. In the game world, it was different, and her son seemed to be too immersed in it. Of course, Eva was aware that Ray Lin loved flames, and he wanted to become one, but he also had another goal. That goal was Yvonne. Engrossing. I am not a masochist, but I do have one in a party. So, it was not engrossing but exhausting. Events in the game have reached a point where we have a lot of work, so it should become bearable soon. Anyway, I am learning how to bear with women, and it's going well. Ray Lin replied to his mother. Since Yvonne was his goal, Ray Lin didn't think of anyone else as a possible partner. He was also young and lacked experience with ladies despite his boldness, which made things worse for him. Ray Lin and residents had to learn together in a game world, and polygamy made things much easier for him. He was bold, stated his desire for flames and business, and enjoyed the gaming time here. With players, it was a different case, and Ray Lin wasn't particularly close with the three of them, to begin with. Girls found a common link quickly, mainly due to Lioness lead. Your mother believes there's no friendship between male and female, so I can understand you, Eva said. I am not surprised by that, Ray Lin replied. His mother was too beautiful and all male friends had developed a thing for her. This led her to continuously form a business relationships with others. Even half of her female friends had received the same treatment. It was all business, and it made Eva stiff toward everyone around her. I am relieved you stay loyal to your feelings, Raylin. It makes me worried about our family's future, however. I thought William would be the one to give me grandchildren, but he lately complained to me. I saw a little of my old self in him. I am all ears, Ray Lin replied.